Kia ora Year 12 and Year 13. I'm going to do two questions from the 2019 Scholarship Calculus paper. I'm going to start with 1E, which is a trig question. Um, so here we're told that A is between 90 and 180 degrees, and we're told the value of sine to the power of 4A plus cos to the 4A, and that equals two-thirds. Now we don't have to do anything except to find the value of sine of 2A. So things that I think about when I see that question are uh, that sine of 2A is the most straightforward of the double angles, right? Because there's only one thing it can be. So somehow in this question, we've got to get 2 sine A cos A going on in there somewhere. The second thing I notice is that A is not between 0 and 90. A is between 90 and 180. And I'm going to do this right now because we know we're going to end up needing the value of sine of 2A. So let's look at what 2A must be between. So 2A has to be between 360 degrees and 180 degrees. Now you could do this at the end of the question, but you might as well do it right now. Draw your sine curve and let's look at where we're going to be on here. So this is A. We are going to be finding sine. So sine of 2A. 2A will be, will, be, will be between 180 and 360. So we know that my answer is going to be less than zero. Okay, now let's go back and stare at this. This is all we've got. So how can I get something with the powers of 4 on it? Well, it must be coming from maybe squaring something. So let's just try this. We've got a plus in here. Let's try sine squared of A plus cos squared of A squared and see what we get when we expand that. Well, we get sine to the power of 4A plus cos to the power of 4A, which is really good. We've got that. But we also get this extra term, which is 2 sine squared A cos squared A. Now, this is excellent because you can see straight away that we're just about there. We're going to be able to link this up with sine of 2A. On the left-hand side here, we know that this is equal to 1 because of the Pythagoras identity. So we get 1 is equal to 2 thirds plus 2 sine A cos A times sine A cos A. So what have I got now? 1 third, I think. Is that right? I think I've copied something wrong. Oh no, that's right. So 1 third is equal to sine of 2A here. Um, and then here, sine, of, sine A cos A times half of sine 2A. So that gives me 2 thirds is equal to sine of 2A squared. And this is where my earlier work comes in that we know we must have a negative number because that tells me that sine of 2A must equal negative root two thirds since 2a is between 360 degrees and 180 degrees okay so that is the first question done not too bad right you just have to look for the obvious things right so there's a pythagoras identity there's a double angle and you just kind of have to not go too fast i think with that question okay now we're going to look at part d for which I've got similar advice, just don't take it too fast and think about what absolute values are about. So when I did this question, I did it completely using a graph. Um, looking at the schedule, they have also given you another method um, which, which works fine too. So I'm going to do both methods in this video. So we've got to solve this. The difference between two absolute values has got to be greater than or equal to one. So remember, what does my absolute value function look like? Well, if we've got y is equal to the absolute value of x, it looks like this. And it's defined as y is equal to x for x bigger than 0, and y is equal to negative x for x less than 0. And that's how we're going to work with these when we do the second method. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to graph this one graph this one, and we're going to look for getting a vertical distance between the two functions that is one or more. So I'm going to use, I haven't done a nice GeoGebra of this on purpose, because you won't have that in the exam either, but you will have a ruler. So let's just take our ruler and see what we've got. 
Okay, so my first function here is the absolute value of x plus 1. And my second function is the absolute value of x minus 4. So taking that ruler, let's just mark accurately, mark on, yeah, sorry, accurately, I have to turn my ruler around. Let's mark on some points. So here is a point for negative 1, just there. And here's a point out here for 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, so about here. So my absolute value function for the first one is going to look like this. And for the second one, and we really want to be drawing these at 45 degree angle, so apologies, I'm not going to redo this video, but when you do this, try and make it reasonably accurate because it's going to help you. Let's see, I think that's good enough. So I'm looking for the point where the gap is bigger than or equal to 1. And labeling this here, this is the graph of the absolute value of x plus 1. And the second one is the absolute value of x minus 4. So you can see if we look back here on these bits here, the absolute value of this one is always lower. So we're not going to have any solutions back here. And the same thing's going to happen at least up until this point. So this is a key point for us to figure out. I'm going to call that point A. And then in here, you can see that once we're out to this bit, there's a big gap, right? And the gap out here is going to be 5, right? Because So let's put in a number like 10. So the absolute value of 10 plus 1 is 11, and the absolute value of 10 minus 1 is 10 minus 4 is equal to 6. So that vertical distance, once these two lines are parallel, is 5. So at point A, the vertical distance is 1. If we just go half a unit this way, and half a unit this way, we're going to get the vertical distance of 1, right? And that's because the slopes of both of those lines are 1 and negative 1. So what we've got to find is point A, and then we've got to add on a half to that x value. So let's do that now. On at point A, we're on the positive branch of this one. So we've got x plus 1. And we're on the negative branch of this one. So that's x plus 1 has to equal negative x minus 4. Now I'm going really slowly through this because if you're doing NCA, you won't have spent much time looking at absolute value graphs. If you are doing Cambridge, you should be able to do this question really easily because um, absolute value functions come up quite a lot. But in here, we've got 2x is equal to 3. So that tells me that the x coordinate of point A is 3 over 2. Right, and so if we add on a half to it, for x is greater than or equal to 2 from slope of the lines, we will have x plus 1 minus x minus 4 is greater than or equal to 1. And we can check that by substituting in x equals 2 and checking that we get the edge of that solution set, right? So we're going to have the absolute value of 3 minus the absolute value of negative 1. Is that right? That's right. So that's 3 minus 1, which gives me, sorry, 3 minus 2 minus 4 is negative 2, right? That's better. Yeah, 3 minus 2 gives me 1. So that looks good. And if you've done a good graph, you'll see visually that that distance here is just getting bigger and bigger as you go. So that's doing it with a graph. Now, I know that that has looked really long and drawn out, but if you actually were doing that confidently with a graph, it's a very, very fast question. Now I'm going to show you the other way working with number lines, which might be better if you're not that confident with absolute values, maybe. Um, let's just take a look at what we started with. And I'm going to draw a number line. So there are going to be different regions on this number line to tell us what these functions mean. So when we're back at 
um, very negative numbers. So negative one is going to be a critical value here, and four is going to be a critical value. When I'm in this region back here, then both of these functions are going to have be on the negative sides of their graphs. Right, so this is kind of case one, and I think that's what the mark schedule is called as well. For case, I'm going to call case two this easy one up here. When we're in case two, then the number inside the absolute value signs is positive for both of these. Right, so here, what we're going to be working with is just x plus 1 minus x minus 4 is greater than or equal to 1. And in case 1, we're working with the negative bit of both. So it's going to be negative x plus 1 minus negative x minus 4 is greater than or equal to 1. Now when we're in between, we're going to be having the positive branch of this. By that I mean the bit on this side. But we're going to have the negative branch of this one. So case 3, we have to solve this equation. x plus 1 minus negative x minus 4 is greater than or equal to 1. So those are all year 9 equations now, right? So that's what we're doing here. So this is for x is less than negative 1. Are there any values of x less than negative 1 that make this true? And we should find the answer is no, right? So negative x minus 1 plus x minus 4 is equal to negative 5 which is not greater than 1. So there's no solutions here. In case 2, we should find that all x values are going to work. So case 2 is for x greater than or equal to 4, and we get x plus 1 minus x plus 4, and that equals 5, which is always greater than 1. So all x greater than 4 are solutions. And then case 3 is my crossover, and I have x plus 1 plus x minus 4 is greater than or equal to 1. So 2x minus 3 is greater than or equal to 1. 2x is bigger than 4. x is bigger than 2. So when we put all of that together, my solution set is simply x greater than or equal to 2. Okay, so two ways to get that one. Um, this video actually I thought was going to be really short, so it's turned out to be really long because I've gone through that absolute value one so slowly. If you've got any questions on it, just um, send me an email or leave me a comment here. Thanks for watching.